Thank you, Dr. Celia. I learned new things. How to add the, this banner? Dr. Kavita, please start. Let's start. Okay. Yeah. Very good morning to everyone. On behalf of NBPGR, I very warmly welcome everyone to this web webinar. As you are aware, we are presently celebrating the Swachita Pakwada. Throughout the country from 16th to 31st of December, in which a series of activities are being undertaken by all ICR institutes and uh, likewise by NBPGR also. The campaign has been scheduled such that all divisions, units, and sections are taking up some form of activity on each day. So in this context, the Division of Plant Quarantine, NBPGR is organizing this webinar, wherein we have invited Dr. G. Selvakumar, Principal Scientist, ICAR IIHR Bangalore, who would be delivering the lecture on the topic, composting of municipal solid wastes for improvement of soil health. Dr. G. Selvakumar is a well-known microbiologist and a principal scientist at IIHR Bangalore. He is known for his contributions in the area of plant growth, promoting rhizobacteria, has a lot of uh, commercialized technologies and also a patent to his credit. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Silva Kumar. Thank you, ma'am. To begin the program, I invite the director, uh, NBPGR, Dr. Ashok Kumarji, to kindly welcome the speaker, the staff, and students of NBPGR and its regional stations. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. You have given a very good introduction about the topic, about the program, about the speaker, and also about the NBPGR activities. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. First of all, good morning to all of you from NVPGR. I welcome to the staff of the NVPGR, the organizer, the students, the scientists, the head of the division, and I especially welcome to our honorable speaker, Dr. Selva Kumar from Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, Bangalore. He has kindly agreed to be with us to, to deliver a very, very thoughtful lecture or talk on the topic that Kapta has mentioned. Sir, really I am thankful to you. You kindly agreed, very short notice, and you are delivering a, a very, very informative lecture. So, uh, the, the OIC PM, Dr. Kupta Gupta, has already told about the importance of this event, Sakshita Pakwada, that will be organized from 15 to 31st. So, in this, uh, in this uh, Pakwada period, day by program has been tagged out, not only in the NEPG and ICR, and all the ministries, to, to, to make uh, this, this, this uh, the Pakwada, Sakshita, as a campaign and to aware one, two, hundred, hundred, two thousands, to, to make a change, to, to make awareness among the public, among the, the thought, and also for the, the physical, mental, other for, for the, the cleanliness of the campus. So with this, I again welcome all the, the staff of the NEPGR, the speaker, and the organizer. With this, I'm really thankful to the organizer to be given me a, a chance to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. 
over to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. V. Celia Chalam, the head of Division of Plant Quarantine, to kindly introduce the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. Good morning, everyone. Respected Director, Dr. Ashok Kumar, today's speaker, Dr. Selva Kumar, HODs, OSCs, and colleagues. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Selva Kumar, Principal Scientist, ICR, Indian Institute of Horticultural Research, Bangalore. Dr. Kumar is graduated from Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. He obtained PhD in Agricultural Microbiology in 2004 from TNU. He has also done postgraduate diploma in technology management in agriculture from NAM Hyderabad. He joined ARS in 2001. He has worked at Vivekananda Parvatiya Krishi Anusandhan Samstan VPKS, we generally know, Almora from 2001 to 2009, and then he joined IIHR Bangalore. His areas of specialization are cold tolerant plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, biological control of insect pests, abiotic stress tolerance in microbes, impact of climate change on soil microbes, agro residue management, cyanobacterial biological nitrogen fixation, and municipal solid waste management. He has 20 years in experience in research, teaching, and extension. He has guided three PhD students, and he has also developed and commercialized the technologies, Arca Microbial Consortium, Arca Fermented Cocoa Pit, Arca Decomposer, and Arca Actinoplus, uh, which has 40 plus licenses and patents awarded uh, one Indian patent for the innovation entitled Method of Mass Production of Soilless Arbuscular Mycorrhizal Inoculum. And he is on the peer review panel of 32 journals across the globe and editor of World Journal of Microbiology and Biotechnology. He has several publications in peer reviewed international and national journals. He has mentored 12 startups uh, or incubates both on-site and off-site. He is presently member of the Technical Guidance Committee of Bruhat Bengaluru Mahanagra Palike on Municipal Solid Waste Management. Was previously chairman of the high-level committee of KSPCB for evaluation of solid waste management technologies that are suitable for households and bulk generators. I happened to listen to him in one of the IIHR's uh, Swachita Bharat uh, final, finalization event, valedictory session in October 2021. And when we got this information that quarantine division has to organize seminars or expert talks, I was telling Dr. Kavita that, what have you written for us? <laughs> Although she was not the one who has written, then immediately I recollected Dr. Selva Kumar and contacted him. Thank you, Dr. Selva Kumar. You are Thank the you right much. person to talk on this uh, solid waste management. Now I request you to deliver lecture on composting of municipal solid waste for improvement of soil health. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll just start sharing my screen, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, screen. Uh, just share my screen. Yeah. Share it, share it. Ma'am, uh, hopefully my uh, screen is visible ma'am yes yes is my screen visible uh, yes it is yes, yes. Full screen. Please okay. make it full screen okay sir. yes ma yeah, i have made it now okay perfect uh, uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, you know uh, that for the nice I mean that for the nice uh, introduction and uh, respected uh, director uh, NBPGR uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, senior uh, faculty members of the of uh, of uh, MDPGR and uh, dear colleagues, uh, thank you so much for the, I mean, uh, the, for this invitation. No, I mean, you know, uh, uh, just to uh, share my experiences with uh, So, I mean, uh, I should just be taking you through some of my experiences out here and some of those uh, techno legal aspects, you know, uh, that the people are not, you know, I mean, uh, uh, really very, I mean, aware as you know, there uh, as an uh, individual or 
or you know, I mean, uh, as an uh, organization, some of those techno legal aspects that we need to know. I'll just try to take you through the slides. So, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. So, let's go to the topic. So, I mean, uh, there, if you see the uh, scenario of waste generation in uh, India, India produces a total of almost uh, 62 million uh, tons of uh, waste annually. Out of which the uh, plastic waste is around 5.6 million tons annually. And the uh, biomedical waste is again 0.17 million tons annually. And then the most uh, dangerous category of waste, hazardous waste, which is 7.9 million tons annually. And now this uh, emerging waste of uh, e-waste, 1.5 million tons per annum. So you can, you no, know, I mean, uh, no, uh, sir, I mean, uh, from the side, you can just, you no, know, I mean, uh, kind of judge the kind of waste that we uh, generate in this country. But then, uh, generally, the awareness about the waste management and the technological aspect is not there, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, with the most uh, people of this country. We take it for granted that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, that once the waste is generated, and we tighten a plastic bag and we throw it outside our, our homes, the job is done. But uh, but in fact, the job is no really kind of very uh, enormous job is there. So the first slide just tells you what is this, what is the scenario of waste generation in India. And if you see in India, the uh, the waste generation, like uh, that it kind of varies between 200 grams to 600 grams per, per, uh, per uh, household per day, depending upon the location, urban or the rural, or like, you know, depending upon the location, it can vary anywhere between 200 grams to 600 grams per day is the waste generated per, you no know, kind of, uh, I mean, per uh, per uh, household. So, I mean, uh, so like uh, uh, from this, uh, totally, we have an estimate of around 43 million tons per annum of, of uh, waste are collected from the households. But then, but then the, uh, the, uh, but then the unfortunate part is only 11.9 million tons of waste are actually treated and disposed. The other 31 million tons are simply dumped in the landfill sites or just taken to the road sites. I'll just show you some, you know, uh, some of the slides, the coming slides you can see how the waste is treated improperly and how, you no, know, uh, and uh, and uh, I mean, uh, and the problems that are you know, kind of uh, associated with this uh, improper treatment of the waste only. I mean, uh, and uh, the uh, and the and the other unfortunate thing is only around seventy-five percent to eighty percent of the municipal waste actually gets collected. Others, it is just you know, uh, I mean, kind of uh, thrown around. And uh, out of the seventy-five to eighty-five percent of the municipal waste which, which is collected, only twenty-two percent of this waste is processed, to treated. So you can kind of you know, I mean, uh, uh, imagine to what extent uh, this country needs to really uh, gear up in in terms of the waste management and uh, and you know it is uh, estimated that the that the waste generation would increase from 62 million tons to around 165 million tons in the year 2030 and it would reach around 436 million tons by the year 2050 so these figures are you know kind of uh, very scary actually if you look at the figures and uh, our waste management handling abilities it is uh, very uh, kind of uh, scary figures are there Therefore, the government has taken a number of initiatives about which uh, I'll be talking. And here you see the most common method of waste disposal. Uh, these pictures are from your uh, neighborhood. I have taken this picture, uh, especially from your neighborhood of uh, Gazipur. Both these pictures are, uh, are from your uh, Gazipur. Disposal of waste in the open. So here you see the uh, mounds of the uh, municipal solid waste. So, I mean, uh, so, I mean so like, you know, this is how the uh, this is how the waste is you know, uh, left out in the open in many of the Indian cities, and uh, this is the most unscientific way of waste disposal, since it uh, leads to several environmental uh, health issues. This is in your uh, neighborhood at uh, Gazipur. So the uh, so the uh, next uh, method of uh, waste disposal is disposal of the municipal solid waste in landfills. This is again a uh, very you no know, kind of an uh, old form of world form of uh, the uh, disposal of the municipal solid waste. They just take the municipal solid waste, go and dump it into an abandoned kind of a quarry, uh, put some soil, cap it, and then leave it. Allow the organic fraction to, you know, I mean, uh, undergo anaerobic decomposition. And from this, the uh, methane formation would be there, and the waste would uh, kind of stabilize after a step. But then this uh, landfilling also is not a good approach. If you see the picture over here, 
this is a picture from uh, Sri Lanka, one of the, uh, no, they're from one of the uh, waste dumping sites. So you see, unfortunately, elephants come and uh, start to uh, forage on the waste. This is the kind of the problem that the world is actually facing. Here, no, I mean, uh, this is a very, no, kind of an uh, unfortunate picture. Here now, see, uh, elephants are coming and uh, foraging on the waste. Elephants which are supposed to, you know, elephants which are supposed to be in the forest, they come in search of the waste. But then, uh, but then this, uh, but then this uh, landfilling also has got its own problems. One is the uh, leachate, which comes out from the waste. It is a, a big source of the uh, pollution of the uh, groundwater. And the next thing is the, uh, and the next thing is the, and the next thing is the uh, emission of the uh, noxious gases from the landfills, and the prevalence of the uh, insect, as well as the vertebrate vectors, as you see over here, and the social impact, you know, uh, surrounding these uh, landfills. People are not able to, you know, I mean, uh, you know, because these landfills are uh, so, you know, kind of uh, notorious that the people, you know, that the uh, that the people in the vicinity of the landfills do not have the right to, you know, I mean, uh, breathe clean air, drink uh, clean water. We create lots of trouble for the people who live around the landfills. So, and uh, so the uh, solution for this kind of landfills is establishing a sanitary landfill. But then, unfortunately, India is not in a position to establish such sanitary landfills because the sanitary landfilling requires a lot of the civil engineering, you know, the uh, design, as well as the management and the handling. Unfortunately, you no, know, I mean, uh, India has not uh, reached uh, that uh, very high, that uh, very high standards of uh, landfilling. So for our landfills are really, I mean, whatever we have now are very unscientific landfills, which do not meet the international standards for landfilling. So the next question is, is uh, landfilling the question? I mean, uh, is, uh, is uh, landfilling the uh, solution? The um, and so the answer for this is no. Uh, there are kind of uh, clear no. Landfillings are I mean landfills are the most unsustainable way of waste disposal, and uh, with a projected generation of 165 million tons of waste by the year 2031, 66,000 hectares of land would be required for landfilling if we keep on sending our waste to landfills. The picture you see here is. Uh, one of the uh, landfills in our uh, Bangalore city, uh, you know, there is a place called, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Mandur, which was in the news for a very long time. And finally, the government had to, you know, I mean, uh, yield to the pressure of the local community. And this particular landfill had to be closed because it creates a lots of problems for the people living in and around this landfill in terms of the air pollution, in terms of the water pollution, in terms of the disease incidents, number of problems do happen due to the landfills. So the, so the answer is very clear. Landfilling is not a solution for the disposal of the municipal solid waste. So we need to look into the alternatives for the disposal of the municipal solid waste. But this waste actually, if you see, it is a very rich kind of an, uh, resource. Though we call it as municipal solid waste, it is a very rich kind of an, uh, resource which can uh, generate around 439 megawatts of uh, power from the uh, combustible portion or it can generate 1.3 million cubic meter of uh, biogas per day or 72 megawatts of electricity from the biogas and uh, from our agriculture point of view this can generate 5.4 million metric tons of compost annually unfortunately this is not being done very you no know, kind of uh, effectively now the government has come up with uh, you know uh, now the come out I mean now the government has come out with a lot of measures to you know I mean uh, take it up more uh, kind of effectively and to uh, you know uh, and to make use of this resource for some uh, economic purpose rather than simply sending it to the landfills or to the open dump sites we can uh, generate a, we can generate a lot of economic value out of this waste I would not call it a waste I would call it as a Municipal solid MSR, municipal solid, no, the uh, resource actually. Don't call it as MSW, call it as MSR. It's a municipal solid you know, kind of an, uh, resource which can give so much of economic value for us. And uh, therefore, the uh, I mean, uh, and uh, therefore, the government of India 
came out with the municipal solid waste handling and the management rules in the year 2016 so so i mean uh, this particular uh, i mean uh, this particular uh, msw rules uh, it had uh, laid the uh, onus on the solid waste management at the on the on the urban local bodies starting from the mega city level to the panchayat level every mega city to every panchayat is expected to take care of its own municipal solid waste within their premises and landfilling was not encouraged they were expected to set up waste processing facilities in all the in uh, there in uh, all the in uh, all the uh, urban local bodies having a population of 1 million or more within 2 years every every city or you know i mean every town was expected to put up an uh, put up an uh, solid waste management facility and uh, there if you see the categories of uh, waste generators and their duties as this you know as it is uh, defined in these rules is every household is categorized as a waste generator and the and the uh, other categories are you know, i mean kind of uh, given over here that you have the uh, even you know, the uh, you know, uh, the people who you know like the uh, you know, like the uh, like this uh, street vendors event organizers resident welfare association market association everybody was expected to segregate waste and to and to uh, store it separately and then and then hand it over to the municipal workers or to the authorized waste pickers this is a mandatory function of every citizen of this country to segregate waste at the source we are not supposed to hand over the mixed waste to the waste collection agency and if uh, every citizen of this country is uh, going to do it the true the uh, letter and the spirit of the uh, rules india would be a very clean and a swachh bharat is possible and uh, likewise you no know, i mean uh, this particular rules has uh, you know i mean uh, like uh, this particular rule has got a central monitoring committee which is constituted under the chairmanship of the secretary ministry of environment forest and climate change to monitor the uh, to monitor the uh, overall implementation of the rules and a number of ministries are a component of this committee <clears throat> and uh, and here you know some of those uh, and here uh, some of those uh, no, some of these uh, important points is the uh, hotels and the uh, restaurants are supposed to segregate the waste and to and to set up a system so that the uh, food waste is i mean utilized for composting and biomethanation because because uh, food waste is you know kind of one of the most uh, you know because because the because the uh, food waste both from your uh, household and from your hotels and your uh, restaurants is a major source that uh, contributes to the municipal solid waste and and uh, the next point was every resident welfare association with an uh, area more than 5 with the, with an uh, with an uh, area more than 5000 square kilometer should you know i mean uh, segregate the waste and then you know i mean uh, hand over the uh, recyclable waste either to the authorized waste because or to the authorized recyclers or to the urban local bodies this is a mandatory function of every resident welfare association in this country with an area more than 5000 square meter and so these are all what the what the uh, rules say and this uh, biodegradable waste it uh, it was not be sent to the uh, landfills or to the uh, open dumping sites biodegradable waste which is segregated as source is supposed to be either composted or biomethanated within the premises as far as possible when it comes to the bulk generators like your apartment complexes and and uh, all this while the uh, smaller vendors like your uh, street vendors were supposed to segregate it at source and also send the waste to the waste management facility and uh, there is a provision under this laws for the high calorific waste which can be which can be used for co processing in the cement or thermal power plants high calorific waste is waste that have got more than 1500 kilo calories they can be sent to the uh, cement cleans or to those uh, thermal power plants for the uh, co incineration so I mean uh, there you see these uh, rules are you know uh, uh, really wonderful and uh, they are you no know, one of the best of the kind in the world i can say but then uh, unfortunately when it comes to the uh, 
implementation right from the uh, right from the uh, individual the uh, household level you no know, uh, there is a uh, lot to be uh, thought about and here you no know, uh, being from the uh, you no know, being from the uh, being from the uh, agricultural field the department of fertilizers and chemicals shall assist in the market development for the city compost and make it available to companies so therefore now every chemical fertilizer producing company has to sell 3 to 4 bags of compost for every 6 to 7 bags of fertilizers they sell it is a mandatory regulation as per law now and likewise the and likewise the uh, ministry of agriculture shall make the changes in the fertilizer control order 1985 which is the apex uh, you know which is the apex the uh, regulation for your uh, menus and all that therefore the uh, utilization of the compost so therefore the uh, fco has been you know kind of uh, amended to include this category called as city compost as an menu so now we see the fco or the fertilizer control order there is a provision to sell the city compost as a menu for the improvement of the soil fertility so these are some of the uh, obligations of the central ministries many of the ministries are there i have taken these two ministries which are of more relevance to us so the time frame for implementation was landfill identification one year setting up of waste processing facilities uh, two years ensure segregation is two years and uh, you know that for uh, the cities up to uh, 1 million population per uh, given two years and uh, you know uh, that for the bigger cities like your uh, delhi and uh, bangalore were given uh, three years and and uh, for the setting up of sanitary landfills which i showed earlier three years time was given and the for the bio remediation and for the capping of the old landfills five years time was given so this uh, rules were implemented in the year 2016 now i mean uh, now uh, like you no know, uh, uh, we are at the end of the whole period at 2021 and we are still not sure to what extent all these targets have been met by the urban local bodies some cities have done good like your uh, indoor mysore have done great some cities are still uh, lagging behind uh, very much so this is as far as the techno i mean this is as far as the legal obligation when it comes to your solid waste management so the next thing is i'll just take up a small uh, you know kind of a case study of the uh, municipal solid waste in the city of bangalore in the year 2015 our uh, urban local body the uh, pbmp they had done a study and they found out that 62.2 62.6 percent of the waste generated in the uh, city of Bangalore was organic in nature. By sending this organic waste to a landfill or to an open dump site, we are losing valuable carbon, valuable nitrogen, valuable phosphorus, and valuable potassium. All the major nutrients which are lacking in our soils, we are going to miss out all that by simply sending it to a landfill or to an open dump site. so the best option for this is either go for composting which is the most uh, feasible kind of option because our indian soils are very you know you know kind of uh, poor in your uh, carbon our soils are you know, i mean literally kind of uh, starved of carbon while we send all our organic waste to the landfill and we are you know kind of uh, depriving our soils of the carbon or the next best option is go for bio biomethanation therefore the generation of the gas or for the electricity or we go for the waste to energy route well but this but but this waste to energy route is possible while we have a calorific value of more than 1500 kilo calories per kg so uh, that is the catch point over here every waste is not suitable for the conversion of waste to energy only those waste which have got a calorific value more than 1500 kilo calories per kg are suitable for the waste to energy plants and if there is an uh, admixture of the uh, organic fraction or the uh, inert fraction over here this uh, comes down very drastically so the best and the simplest and the most useful option for the management of the organic fraction of the municipal solid waste is compost that best for this country so if you see to do this what one needs to do one needs to really help the one you know i mean uh, uh, one uh, one uh, uh, really needs to help the city waste management system by the very simple processes segregation at source at home if you are able to follow 
the segregation at source segregate your uh, organic fraction separately and the recyclable waste separately and the sanitary waste separately we will be doing a great service to this country because the organic fraction can go directly for the composting while the recyclable waste it, it uh, goes to the dry waste collection center and it can be either be you know i mean uh, recycled or it can be sent for the uh, combustion depending upon the calorific value and the third portion the uh, sanitary waste alone must be going to the landfill or the incinerators that is the you know this is what was uh, thought about while these uh, rules were uh, framed up but uh, you know i mean uh, uh, but the uh, implementation has become a big problem mainly because of the lack of segregation at the source even a city like bangalore you know uh, there with a lot of the you know uh, there uh, with a lot of the campaigns and the awareness campaigns and uh, like you know uh, bangalore has uh, kind of achieved only around 40 to 50 percent segregation alone we are yet to attain 100 percent segregation some wards have got uh, up to uh, 70 percent segregation some, uh, I mean, uh, while uh, some wards are, uh, you know, I mean, uh, are there uh, only in the 20 to 30 percent level. So if you see, you know, I mean, uh, there on an average, uh, we have uh, roughly achieved around 50 percent segregation of waste in the city of Bangalore. And the most troublesome thing is what you see at the bottom there in your uh, left hand corner. That is, uh, you know, uh, handing over of the waste in these plastic bags to the waste collection agency. What happens is while you put your waste in a plastic bag, tie it up tightly, and then you know I mean hand it over to the waste collection agency. You know I mean uh, you know uh, uh, without the segregation, one is partial anaerobic decomposition takes place within the bags. So so I mean so what happens is by the time the waste goes to the waste management facility. There is a uh, time lag of around 24 hours to 48 hours, depending upon the location. So what happens is partial anaerobic decomposition has already set in and the waste has started to smell. By the time it goes there, the whole smell gets, you know, kind of uh, amplified. And then the smell becomes more and more. And then the local com community start to, you know, and then the local community start to uh, object to the waste management plants in their locality. So please do not hand over your waste in plastic bags to the waste management agency and do not tie it tightly. This is a deadly combination of what we do in our normal day-to-day -day life, thereby the damage caused to the environment as well as the solid waste management facility of the city is very high. We create a lot of damage just by this one practice of putting it into a garbage bag, tying it tightly. These garbage bags are being sold in, you know, uh, they are in our uh, supermarkets, all our malls, everywhere these garbage bags are. But this garbage bag system is the most unsustainable system of waste management when it comes to our uh, cities especially. So, I mean, uh, like, you know, uh, as I told you, you know, kind of earlier, why do we need to segregate our waste? Simple thing. If you want to bring down the pressure upon the city solid waste management system, kindly segregate your waste. Segregate your waste into the, into the, organic fraction, recyclable fraction, and the sanitary waste fraction. That is the simple thing that every citizen of this country needs to do at their, uh, at their, uh, at their uh, home level to make this country a Swachh Bharat. That is the simplest thing that we as individuals can do. And the rest of the city waste management system is uh, you know, capable of handling. They have got the infrastructure. They have got the, I mean, uh, they've got the legal support. They have got the financial support. But we as individuals need to segregate waste, avoid putting waste into polythene bags, tying them tightly, and then handing it over to the waste management agents. This is one very simple message which I thought I'll just pass it on to all my colleagues over here. And uh, sir, I mean, uh, here we see the city of Bangalore as such, as on as on August 2021, we, we have got uh, seven waste management plants with a total uh, composting capacity of 1,720 tons per day, bio biometration plants having a capacity of 60 tons per day. So the uh, total wet waste handling capacity of the city of Bangalore is 1,785 tons per day. And uh, you know, uh, one of our uh, private uh, vendors over here in Bangalore is uh, you know, I mean, kind of uh, able to take 300 tons per day. But 
the unfortunate part is still the city of Bangalore sends a lot of the mixed waste into one of the uh, quarries or, or the uh, field sites. So, I mean, uh, this is a kind of an uh, very something which I have done the highlighting in bed. Unless we reduce the quantum of waste going to, uh, to our uh, landfills, we are losing out on very precious carbon, precious nitrogen, precious phosphorus, precious potassium, which can be composted and made available to the fields. So the uh, whole uh, capacity of the city of Bangalore is around 5,154, but these plants keep operating only at 50% capacity, primarily because of the lack of segregation at the household level. That is the number one problem. And second thing is, uh, and second thing is, uh, you know, due to the uh, due to the uh, admixture of the plastics along with the organic fraction. Both these are the main reasons why these plants run at below 50% capacity. So, I mean, uh, that we see the composting systems for the uh, municipal solid waste management, different systems are there, and the you know, and the most common, you no, know, and the most, uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, the most uh, low technology system is the passive windrow. I'll just show you what is that. And then we have the turn windrows. Then we have the, uh, and then we have the uh, aerated static piles. And the last one is the invasive uh, agitated bed systems, which are uh, much more expensive and uh, which are followed in the Western countries. So, I mean, there, uh, there uh, in the uh, Indian context, it is either the passive intro method or the turn winter method. We have successfully experimented with the, both these methods uh, in uh, our institute also. We have seen that the windrow method is the best method to handle your organic waste. It could be your uh, municipal solid waste. It could be your uh, crop residue, anything. This is the most simplest method for handling of waste. And if it is done properly, it turns out excellent quality compost, which can be turned out back into the field. So if you see a passive intro, it just looks like this. You know, uh, uh, that the waste are just you know, uh, made into a heap. So basically, and windrow is a heap, which is, which is found on top of the ground. Unlike the other method of composting, wherein the waste are put you know, uh, into pits. In the in the windrow method of system, I mean, in this uh, in this windrow method of composting, waste are put on the top, and they are formed into piles. They are in the passive windrow, no turning is done; it is just uh, formed formed into a pile. They have to decompose by itself. So this is the most uh, simplest method of composting of municipal solid waste, especially the segregated waste. This can be followed at every you know there at the uh, gram panchayat level or at the gram level. Because where they don't have a lot of the infrastructure and the finances, they can simply go for the passive windrows. And the and the second thing is the turned windrows, which we follow in the city of Bangalore for you know uh, therefore all our uh, uh, waste management system. This is the most preferred method for the for the for the rapid con composting of your municipal solid waste. And here again, the here again the main difference between the passive window and the turned window is the turning. The turned window system, we do the turning of the uh, window. So here you see, we, we, I mean, we just do the turning. I mean, this is how the turning is done in the city of Bangalore. From one side, the piles are turned to the other side. So by the process of turning, what happens is the uh, you know, uh, the uh, aeration improves and the pile gets uh, mixed up properly. And here we observe that in the city of Bangalore, we do four turnings at weekly intervals. So the uh, turnover period, from the garbage coming in till it is taken to the curing section is around 28 days. Four turnings, it is done in the city of Bangalore. I mean, uh, this is a classic picture of how a municipal solid waste facility looks in the city of Bangalore. These facilities are as good as any kind of an uh, industrial facility. I mean, are as good as any you know, kind of an uh, kind of an industrial facility in the city of Bangalore. So here now, uh, I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, actually, if you see, all these facilities were. Uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, originally kind of uh, designed to take in the mixed waste, then do the segregation, and then send the and then send the uh, organic selection for the uh, waste decomposition. But now, as such, they have stopped taking the mixed waste. They take only the segregated uh, organic waste, and this organic waste is mainly the uh, market waste, which comes from the market, which is mainly, you know, uh, that your uh, fruit, your vegetable. Uh, and your household, you no know, kind of your domestic waste, all this comes over here. 
and it is turned out into good quality compost and then this compost is being in turn sold to the farmers through the Raita Samparka Kendras at the rate of 200 rupees per ton. And in case one wants to buy it directly from the plant, they need to pay 2000, uh, I mean, uh, it is sold at the rate of rupees 2500 per ton, inclusive of the transport. So you can, you know, kind of uh, uh, imagine the kind of the efforts that have gone in the setting of these plants and for the sale of the compost. And uh, one very important thing in this method of composting is we need to form proper windrows so that the temperature of the pile goes to more than 55 degrees centigrade. Maximum, it can go up to 70 degrees. So if the piles are formed properly, we can turn out very good compost and also we can kill many of the harmful uh, bacteria of uh, public health importance if it is done properly. But, but the catch point over here is if it is not done properly, it will it, it would start to smell. And once it smells, you have all the local communities coming in. No, I mean, uh, I mean uh, agitating in front of the solid, in front of the solid waste management plant, asking them to shut down the plant. So here the unfortunate part is we create our trouble and then we expect somebody else to solve the you know uh, that to uh, solve the trouble. So uh, that is a very sad part that the message that uh, you know that is the message that must be uh, going to the community is we should manage. Uh, our waste at our end and no i mean uh, every individual uh, has got an uh, legal obligation to do segregation at their source handle waste at their end like in uh, kannada they say nanna kasa nanna jawabdari my waste my responsibility this kind of a message has to percolate into the in, into the society and the second method, like me, and the uh, third method is the uh, irritated static pile method. In this, if you see, the uh, in this method, air is blown into the windrow. Like here, you have the, uh, no, like here, you have the, uh, the windrows are formed, and then the air is blown into the, into the windrow for the rapid, you see, the basic, Fundamental requirement for an efficient window method of composting is only three things I would say always. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. You provide enough oxygen, form the window properly, give adequate quantity of moisture, don't do excess moisturizing. The nature has got its ability to take care of itself. Nature has got enough microbes in the atmosphere itself, which can convert any organic fraction into good quality compost. Only the time might vary. It can vary anywhere between 28 days to uh, 45 days or to your 60 days. But nature has got the capacity to take care of itself. All it requires is oxygen, proper dimension of the windrow, little bit of moisture. That is all is required to take care of itself. So another example is the, uh, I mean, uh, this picture shows you the uh, the actively the uh, the actively aerated uh, uh, windrow wherein the uh, Blowing of the air is done, either it can be done through positive pressure or through negative pressure. So the system is not very popular in India because it uh, involves a little more of engineering design and it also requires a little more of expense also to uh, put these uh, blowing pipes. But definitely the quality of the compost would be better than your, uh, than your uh, turned window method of composting. Here again, while it comes to the composting, one very simple thing is proper formation of windrows. And a very simple uh, rule I tell people is, take care of your browns and greens, even at the household level, while you do your composting. Take care of the browns and greens. Do not put excess green material. Do not put excess brown material. If you put excess of green material, it contains more of nitrogen, and therefore the composting might happen, but then the loss of the nutrients is more. If your uh, feedstock contains excess of brown material, what would happen is your composting would become slow. So the right mix of the greens and the browns for your feedstock management is the most important when it comes to efficient composting. And uh, that to do on a commercial scale, uh, there you can uh, check out this particular calculator available in the uh, University of Cornell website. They have given a wonderful calculator how to make your feedstock for composting because composting is a science. Composting is an art and science. Let us, no, I mean, uh, keep it in our mind. There is an art and a science in composting and uh, there is a physics, there is a chemistry, and there is a biology of composting. 
so if it done properly it can be three so the so the uh, so so the optimal window dimensions are so the optimal window dimensions are, are around 1 to 3 meters in height and the width is uh, double the height that's all it requires here in our uh, icr we are uh, no i mean uh, like here in our ihr we are uh, able to convert all our farm residue into good quality compost by following this window method of composting as i told you earlier oxygen is the most important thing for, for, for this method of composting so the availability of the uh, air pores within the composting system is what is important excess of moisture would lead to compaction of the windrows and therefore leads to the you no know, the uh, slower decomposition of material so the main thing here is ensuring 55 to 65% volume required for efficient composting so the waste should not be very wet also and how to ensure this efficiency is possible see here in bangalore what uh, what uh, here in bangalore what has been suggested is collect all these uh, you no know, the uh, coconut uh, shells from the uh, coconut uh, from the uh, tender coconut uh, vendors who tend to throw those shells outside and go collect all those shells use it for increasing the volume of the windrows this was one very simple suggestion i made to the bbmp and it has worked out very well so these shells can be put into the windrows therefore the windrows don't get compacted so the first thing is windrows don't get compacted these shells also can undergo three to four cycles of composting so it's a very simple thing that we suggested and it has worked out very well and uh, as i told you temperature management in the windrows is very very important a uh, temperature of around 65 to 70 degree is what uh, determines the efficient composting because this composting is a thermophilic process composting happens best in the thermophilic range where the temperature goes 65 to 70 degree that is when efficient composting takes place as i told you temperature is very important and the temperature in the core of the windrow that is what is going to determine the uh, entire efficiency of the process so here again one common problem is occurrence of anaerobic conditions within the windrow these happen mainly due to the excess moisture inadequate porosity rapidly degrading substrate or the partially degraded substrate or the excessive pile size in my first visit to the bbmp the piles were reaching the you no know, the piles were you know almost 5 uh, to 6 meters in height that was a uh, wrong practice to do maximum height is 2 meters height that is the maximum permissible height for the efficient uh, winter method of decomposition now these things have come to order and like you know but uh, the common problem that with the with the uh, with the composting of of the municipal solid waste is one is the uh, leachate here again leachate is the water that comes out in the first 7 days while the cells are being uh, broken out a uh, lots of the leachate come comes out so the leachate is a major issue this can be taken care by and then the uh, odors and the uh, emission of the volatile organic compounds if done properly we can minimize the odor and the and the and the emission of the volatile organic compounds all we need to is to understand the science of composting while we understand the science of composting we can definitely manage the leachate we can manage the uh, we can manage this problem of this uh, water and volatile organic compounds uh, and and the volatile organic comp compounds coming out from the windrows and the dust see obviously composting would generate some dust and some bio the uh, and the bio uh, aerosols would be generated therefore the government has recommended uh, you no know, there uh, a buffer area of around 200 meters around the waste management site 200 meters of buffer zone is generally recommended around the waste management site and uh, as i told you the main cause for the uh, the main cause of the uh, odors in your waste management sites is primarily because of the wrong selection of the feed stock and the poor management of the pin rows if you are able to solve this because here the problem in bangalore is we get our feed stock having 60 to 70% moisture bangalore waste is very wet in nature i am not sure about delhi uh, what kind of waste you generate in delhi but in bangalore our major issue is excess of moisture in the incoming waste so while this problem was being solved actually the uh, smell started coming down we told them don't take in any material that is having more than 50% moisture 
do not take material more than 50% moisture, you'll be able to solve 50% of the problem. So likewise, uh, you no, know, thereby, you no, know, I mean, uh, thereby some of those simple, uh, the uh, submissions to the BBMP, many of the solid waste management plants have been able to drastically bring down their problems in terms of the, in terms of the uh, volatile organic uh, com compound emission and the smell and all this. So the first seven days of this composting is the most crucial process when maximum leachate and the volatile organic carb compound would, uh, would be uh, excreted. If you are able to manage the first seven days carefully, you will be able to do very good composting. So the first seven days is very important when it comes to compost. And now uh, let us look at the, uh, uh, now let us look at the uh, end product, that is the uh, city compost and uh, what the fertilizer control order says about the city compost. Now the fertilizer control order has uh, defined the uh, standards for which I mean for the uh, city compost and the city compost uh, to be sold even by the urban local body has to meet this particular ratio. It is you know very much possible. Here the total nitrogen content is only 0.8 percent, P is only 0.4 percent, potassium is only 0.4 percent and the carbon to nitrogen ratio should be below 20%. So, and here the most important thing that they put is the particle size should be below 4 mm. This is, you know, kind of an uh, hurdle when it comes to the marketing of the uh, acidity compost. Because uh, many of the time, if you consider 100 kgs of the uh, wet waste material, perhaps, uh, you know, there uh, with your best process efficiency, you might achieve 15 kg of the minus 4 mm material coming out as compost. So, I mean, this is one issue that, you know, the, that needs to be kind of uh, deli deliberated at the uh, higher level also. Why are we insisting on this 4 mm compost below 4 mm? Why do we insist that below 4 mm should be the uh, particle size of the compost, something that needs to be uh, deliberated and uh, thought about? And uh, the most important thing is it should be uh, free of pathogens and, and, uh, and it should also uh, have uh, lesser than uh, prescribed limits of the heavy, heavy metals. These are some of the uh, standards prescribed for the city compost. And coming to another very important thing is compost stability versus compost maturity. This is something that is not being taught at the uh, university uh, level also. So we tell that a compost is stable while it is fairly resistant to further microbial action. While that we tell that a compost is mature, when it does not cause any phytotoxicity on the plants. There are a number of methods for the checking of the compost stability and maturity. So if you see the compost maturity and stability as, uh, I mean, uh, as it is defined by the fertilizer control order, only the CN ratio alone is mentioned, but you know, I mean, actually, the CN ratio alone is not sufficient to judge the compostability. So the compostability parameters, number of parameters are there: total organic carbon, rate of respiration, water soluble carbon, water soluble nit nitrogen, ammoniacal nitrogen, alkyl extracted carbon, humic acid like carbon, fulvic like carbon, humification ratio, humification index. All these are compostability parameters that uh, have been studied in my lab. And some of like dehydrogenous de activity and the uh, respiration. So a very simple compost maturity analysis, which can be done at every household level, is the simple seed germination assay. What we can do is we can just take one gram of compost sample, add this to 10 ml of soil water, mix it thoroughly for 30 minutes, filter through water filter paper, and just check it out for the seed germination assay using your uh, radish as a test crop. So this is one thing. And uh, this can be done at the most uh, households also, or the uh, or the other method is just take. Uh, I mean, I I'll just come to that in the next slide. But uh, there in the city of Bangalore, this particular system of composting of uh, your domestic waste has been very popular, and many of our uh, households, many of our apartment complexes have kind of adopted this method. There is a small kind of an uh, video also. So by this method, all your domestic waste, mainly your fruit peels vegetable peels, eggshells, paper, and leftover food can be converted into your compost by buying this simple structure called as a kamba. And this kamba comes out either in your, uh, you know, either, either, uh, either in your plastic form or in your uh, earthen form. 
by the and uh, this is an uh, one time expenditure buying this cumber we can turn all our kitchen domestic waste into compost and you know, i mean make use of it for our uh make it for our uh, home gardening or for your terrace gardening or for your soil cultivation whatever we we can convert all our waste into compost and there is no need to buy the microbial cultures or the enzymes sold by the company each time nature has got its own mechanism to take care of itself though the company would like to sell you uh, no though the company would like to sell these cultures or these enzymes on a uh, recurring basis there is no need all it requires is your domestic waste and a little bit of Coir pith or coco peat, and in case coir pith or coco peat is not there in North India, simply your fallen that your uh, leaf litter or your uh, straw, any brown material rich in carbon is sufficient. There is a small uh, video board this I'll just play, and and there is a very small uh, whole home scale compost maturity test. How do we test the compost that are prepared at home? Take one part of the compost made at home, mix it one to one with soil. Moisten it lightly, put it into a cup, and just uh, sow some uh, seeds of the uh, radish. Check for the germination of the of the uh, check for germination of the uh, radish seeds. If uh, if uh, more than eighty percent of the radish seeds are you know I mean uh, able to germinate, that means your compost is mature and it is ready for use. Okay. If your radish seeds don't germinate, that means your compost is not ready and it needs to undergo further. Some decomposition. More than eighty percent radish seed germination is an index of good uh, compost uh, maturity. So this is a small thing. And here, uh, IHR, we convert all our yeah. Here in IHR, we convert all our crop residue. We just uh, bring it to one common location. Convert all our crop residue into compost, and you know almost uh, annually we generate around 100 to 120 tons of compost, which are supplied to the farm management section and supplied to various divisions on request. So we don't waste any crop uh, residue dry agent, and this entire composting is done in the absence of cattle. Dirt. Okay, the point is, we do not have any uh, heads of cattle over here. We do the process entirely in the absence of cattle dirt, and so. Uh, Thank you so much for the opportunity. And finally, I, I mean, uh, I would like to con conclude with this uh, thing: reduce, reuse, recycle, and save the world. And there is a small uh, video. There's one uh, two-minute clip which uh, Madam uh, Celia Chalam asked, asked me to play it for you. So I'll just play that video, and then we can take questions at the at the end of that video. video play, Sham video, so play play my video play my share share my play the video. Ma'am, is the is the video visible? No, 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 it is one second, ma'am. One second, ma'am. I'll just play it again. Sure, sure. In the meantime, if everybody switch on the video, we can take the screenshot. Video only. Play the video. Thanks. Ma'am, now the video is visible, ma'am. No, no, no. Some your uh, computer screen is visible. Okay, where is the video? Dear? No, ma'am. No, no. Yeah, yes, yeah. now yes, it is. Yes. Oh, okay, ma'am. I'm just going to play it now. Yeah. Yeah. There is no audio. Your battery is low. It's showing. Mm -hmm. 
Ma'am, am I online? Yeah, you are online. Yes, ma'am. Now the video is visible, yeah. ma'am. Visible. Okay, ma'am. I'm just playing, playing it now. Yeah. yeah. Sir, but audio is not coming. Audio is not coming. Seems. So. There is no sound, Dr. Selva Kumar. Um, this was so uh, You can explain otherwise. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, like, uh, ma'am, uh, shall I, no, I mean, uh, share the uh, video, ma'am. Shall I uh, share the video? You can circulate it, ma'am. I shall uh, share the video. Okay. I shall uh, share the video with you, ma'am. Uh, okay. You can circulate it among your colleagues. I think there's some trouble, ma'am. I shall share the video, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, now uh, I shall be uh, happy to take questions from our colleagues at Delhi. Dr. Kavita? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Selva Kumar, very profusely for this wonderful lecture. I'm sure uh, our friends have many questions and queries. And I request them to please raise their hands and or they can even put it in the chat box where I can read out one by one and our speaker can, Dr. Selva Kumar can answer. So the topic is now open for discussion. Uh, Jamil, Dr. Jamil Akhtar has raised his hand. Yes, Dr. Jamil, please. Very good afternoon. Sir, it was really a very informative lecture. And uh, from your lecture, we are, uh, to me, means it was very educative. Uh, but uh, to uh, some of the points where I wanted some clarification, like in one of the slides, you have shown that these figures, uh, one of the um, key event was the e-waste. I didn't get what is e-waste. Sir, uh, uh, sir, this uh, means your organic waste, all your uh, mobile phones, computer screens, computer hardware, which is again becoming a big problem in this country. We change our mobile phones every uh, three months, six months. We you know we tend to ch change our phones. What to do with the phones? Even in my home, I know that I got around ten to twelve uh, sets are there, not knowing what to do with it. We have just, you know, uh, stored it for uh, posterity over there. Unless we know how to do it, we can't throw our uh, e-waste into the city management system. So that's what I meant by e-waste, sir. Because the, now the turnover time is uh, very less for your phones and for your uh, electronics. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Another question with regard to uh, composting of plastic weights. Yes, sir. What is the current status, uh, the development with regard to the composting of plastic? So this uh, bioplastics, as they say, has not, you know, uh, you know kind of, uh, I mean, uh, become very popular. One is prohibitive cost. Entirely biodegradable plastic is prohibitively costly. You know, that you go to a mall and you take a cover. They charge around five to seven rupees per uh, cover, mm -hmm. which is not, you know, kind, you know, which is not, you know, that kind of that affordable that to the common man. So, therefore, the bioplastics to become a uh, reality, perhaps uh, some more time is required. As of now, the only option left before us is RRR, reduce, reuse, recycle, unless we come out with an economically feasible bioplastic. And the bioplastic, whatever is being sold also, it is not, you know, kind of, kind of you know, that uh, entirely made of, of bio, bio polymer. There again, to some extent, uh, chemical polymers are being used. Though they tell that it is made of your uh, cornstarch and all other things, it is not entirely a uh, thing. And as far as our agriculture is concerned, one of my major concerns personally is the uh, use of our uh, mulching sheets. 
we use a lot of plastic mulches. That is really something that uh, really you know uh, troubles me as a microbiologist, as a person involved in solid waste management. My major worry is uh, drip lines and uh, mulching sheets. At least the drip lines can go for the recycling, but these but these mulching sheets are not you know exactly uh, uh, recyclable also. So that is one major worry for me. Whenever I go to my farm, I see my mulching sheets. I am really uh, worried. We need to find an alternative for it. Either go for bio mulches. And that is really the point of worry, sir. So, sir, did you find any microbe uh, which is uh, really uh, capable of decomposing the normal plastic? Sir, uh, I mean, uh, Are any catalyst? No, no uh, personally, no. I have not come across such thing because our work has not been in that direction also. Though we thought that, uh, you know, something. But, you know, there are some reports. But the unfortunate part is your uh, biopolymers and your uh, superabsorbent gels these are going to be real trouble for the future, especially your uh, superabsorbent material. It could be the diapers or the uh, sanitary napkins and these uh, polymers. They are really causing lots of uh, damage to the environment, sir. And you know, we have seen the flooding you know, kind of uh, happening now in Chennai and in uh, you know, uh, Bangalore also because of the choking of the uh, waterways by uh, all these uh, material, plastics. Sir, uh, if you allow me one more question, please. Sir, please, sir. Uh, as you very rightly said that uh, to test the uh, compost ready or not, we yes, simply sir. use the reddish sheet. Yes, so sir. Is there any specific reason to test only reddish or sir, any uh, seed? Actually, no, no, I mean, uh, sir, sir, like, uh, actually your radish is, uh, no, uh, I mean, actually your radish is uh, kind of a uh, sensitive crop to your phytotox, I mean, to your phytotoxicity. Therefore, uh, we have been recommending radish seed. In case somebody is not able to get your radish, you know, uh, uh, at least your mustard seeds. Most homes have got a few uh, mustard seeds at home. Mm -hmm. They can try your mustard seeds also. Any of your uh, cruciferous vegetables, they are very sensitive to phytotoxicity. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Huda would like to ask something. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Silva. Uh, Thank you, sir. On decomposing in Almoda, also you could identify some of the decomposers and still continuing. Very educative lecture. And I want to ask how many of the decomposers are commercialized and available in the market? Sir, uh, sir, uh, so I mean, uh, sir, like, you know, I mean, uh, there are like, uh, no, uh, sir, like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I was a committee, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I was a chairman of the committee constituted by uh, KSPCB in. Uh, uh, 2019 to you know, I mean, kind of uh, look into these issues. Okay. And uh, almost 32 companies came forward and uh, made the presentation. Every company claimed to have some uh, secret, you know, kind of a microbe which they tell would uh, do the job. But then the companies were, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, but then the companies were not able to tell the, you know, uh, tell the name of the microbe. Okay. I've come across 32 co different companies telling that they have got a formulation. Okay. But none of them were able to tell what is the taxonomic question of the microbe used, whether it's a bacteria or a fungi. Even that, they were, they were not able to tell. So the market is you now kind of uh, flooded with these uh, compost starters. Most of these are in that non-descript uh, kind of uh, category. But uh, therefore, that home-scale composting, I believe that home-scale composting can be just done just with simply with some uh, leftover curds. Whatever your little left, leftover curd is there at your home, just add a little bit of that. It takes care of itself. As I told you, nature has got you know, the whole thing in place. Compost starters at the maximum can bring down the duration of composting, by, say, by uh, 5 to 10 days. Beyond that, uh, no magic is possible. And this talk of this making compost within 24 hours is a big uh, kind of a uh, hoax. 24-hour composting <laughs> and, this, uh, you know, and this organic no, this waste converters, that is a big hoax. I have given a very strong kind of a report to uh, KSPCB telling that this 24 composters, no, I mean, no, uh, uh, must not be encouraged. Practically speaking, it is not possible to make compost within 24 hours. What it does is only the size reduction and the charring of the material. That doesn't, you know, I mean, uh, qualify as compost at all. So at the home scale level, I would not recommend a compost starter for you. Your leftover curds has got lots of lactic acid bacteria. 
which which have got a uh, lots of the enzyme activity activities to care to, uh, to take care of your uh, domestic waste at the maximum uh, compost hatter given the one that you know i mean uh, we sell over here in the name of our arca decomposer it, it has been working very excellently with your uh, poultry menu so for those kind of situations we would require we would recommend a compost hatter not for the household level at the household level you simply your leftover curds are more than sufficient a little bit of it don't add the excess of it sir so it should not become kind of soggy because the excess of the curds or the excess of the food waste would you know kind of attract the uh, rodents and then the insects and uh, then your interest will go so to make a start start composting only with your kitchen waste alone Ex uh, exclude, your, uh, exclude your exclude uh, your food waste sir ஒரு <laughs> Although Thank that you so much, I will formally say what of thanks. And uh, as you said, there is a buffer zone of 200 meters is recommended around the waste management site. So when we use this yes, combined at home, uh, are there any problems associated with the odor and all? No, ma'am. Uh, no, uh, that is combined at home. It doesn't make any problem. Well, you don't add the uh, food waste at the start. after you become a, a seasoned kind of a composter then you can add your food waste to uh, start with your uh, vegetable peels your uh, fruit peels and your egg shells it's perfectly done at home now. there's no problem there's no problem of smell at all all it requires is a, all it requires is a little bit of your uh, brown material it could okay. be your coir pith or your coir waste or your fallen leaves any brown material so that brown is to green is what is actually going to determine the efficiency of the whole composting process the excess of greens is not good excess of brown is not good so that uh, judicious blend of both these one handful of brown material per day is more than sufficient so that uh, 200 meter buffer zone is for a uh, solid waste management plant it is not for your uh, domestic waste management waste. and uh, uh, is it available online kamba yes ma'am yes ma'am it is uh, available online a uh, number of bangalore based companies they sell it it is amazing uh, I mean, uh, it is there on your Amazon and all that. There's a company from Bangalore called as uh, mm. Daily Dump. They're the one who really who, uh, pioneered this whole uh, process. So in the Bangalore, it is very popular. Many of the apartment communities they keep uh, following it. Many apartment communities don't send their waste to the thing at all. They manage it by themselves. Slowly, the awareness is picking up, but then still we have got a long, long way to go. Carry the message to all the folks of this nation. Still a long way. Yeah, yeah. I really liked when you said swachhata is possible in India. Yes, ma'am. It is possible. If everybody puts a hand together, it is definitely we can make yeah. the country a, a very clean, green country. But every household, every individual has to take the responsibility. It is not the it is not the responsibility of our BBMP alone. BBMP can't do anything without our support. Yeah. Usually in quarantine, we say that biosecurity is everybody's business. Yes, like Swachh Bharat is everybody's business. Yes, ma'am. Like when, uh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I am in Andhra Pradesh. Also, I know like when the uh, municipality waste collectors they yes, tell us uh, to keep the green separately and all. But I don't yes, know. At least where I live in Delhi, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, yeah, that is very uh, important. Yeah. Yes, no this no no no, no ma'am our bangalore salt I mean uh, there is one ngo called as bangalore solid waste management uh, round table they have taken the message across to uh, siddhi pet in uh, telangana okay and there with the help of the government uh, you know uh, i mean uh, they are trying to uh, spread this message over there yeah thank you thank you thank you ma'am there's one question in the chat box in domestic waste composting major issue is foul smell coming out during the process is there any way to reduce this foul smell uh, ma'am like uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, as i told you do not add food waste at the start start with your uh, fruit peels vegetable peels eggshells 
don't add food waste at the start and do not forget to add one this uh, handful of this brown material whatever brown material you are able to get you will be able to avoid the smell and in case you have the problems with the uh, flies and the insects just put any of these uh, neem based uh, no, this insect uh, of the uh, repellents repellents that's more than sufficient we have a neem soap at our institute that's what we tell our people just put some uh, neem cake or some neem just so that the insects don't come but the secret over there ma'am don't add food waste i mean uh, start only with your kitchen waste and don't forget to add a little bit of browns daily hand handful of brown brown material daily Okay. So, if there are no other uh, questions, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Selva Kumar, for this very wonderful lecture, and also for the very interactive question and answer session. I now request our director, Dr. Ashok Kumarji, to kindly give his remarks. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. <coughs> thank you dr Sal selva kumar for giving a very very informative lecture you have given a very good statistics on the solid waste generation over the years annually and also the how the the the, the waste can be managed that can be managed at individual level at community level or a city level so this was a really a very very informative to all of us we have been educated uh, educated and uh, got a, lo a lot of awareness generation about the solid waste management 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 not, not only the management converting into compost management into convert convert into compost that too for the soil health that too for the soil health so so, so this uh, this lecture has got a very Very, very, very close relationship with the agriculture, the so waste management, and also uh, uh, as far as the, the control of the sanitation of the solid waste coming through different sources. So, sir, you have been I have uh, I have been told that there are 62 million tons uh, solid waste is generated annually, and out of that, out of that uh, six. So around six ton is plastic, and around eight ton is this hazardous material. So around twenty percent are this supply, this non-recyclable material, and I think eighty percent are the material which are cycle, which can be cycled, or it can found place in the in, in the management or the you can say the the uh, management for, for conversion into the compost compost for the soil health compost for the income generation of the farmers compost for the kitchen gardens and compost for all the purposes which are being used in our country you have also given a very good statistic about the fertilizer then is any is any scheme for the from the government side to to to, to manage this waste and to get some subsidy over the chemical uh, Chemical uh, fertilizer because directly and directly, directly community, farmer, or as a citizen, we are we are uh, contributing to the society through the waste management or through the individual as uh, an individual capacity. So, uh, so the overall the lecture is very very informative, and I am really thankful to Dr. Sahil Kumar. You are kindly agreed as part lotus. And you have given a very, very good uh, aesthetic and very good, very, 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 very informative examples from the Bangalore or from different cities for the management of the solid waste. And not only at 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 at, 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 at uh, individual levels too. So that that that, that is uh, possible to manage the waste. Not only manage the waste, but to get the organic produce at our. At our terrace garden, through our terrace garden, or through the kitchen garden. So, at individual level, we can we can uh, uh, we can uh, use waste as a compost uh, through a very little uh, investment. So, for this, I am really thankful to the 
speaker who given a very elaborate talk for solid waste management for composting and i am also thankful to the organizer dr celia and dr savita for choosing a speaker of a very good knowledge about the solid waste management that to for the uh, composting having the agriculture microbiology background it is very very important really i am thankful to the our our staff members they have come here and uh, i have seen one time they were about 70 so most of the persons have joined here i am really thankful to all of you then and i am again thankful to this elia and katsa for giving me opportunity to be with with you you and with this uh, by land this week thank you thank you dr katsa thank you sir thank, thank you, you so sir. much thank you sir and uh, at the end of this very educative and interesting lecture i would like to propose a formal vote of thanks first of all we wish to express our gratitude to the speaker dr selva kumar for kindly agreeing to deliver the lecture today on the occasion of the swachhata pakwada he was so generous and he readily agreed for the lecture when we approached him thank you sir for this wonderful lecture which i'm sure all of us will learn from we are extremely fortunate to have got this opportunity to listen to you we are also extremely thankful to the director nbpgr dr ashok kumar for steering the organization of this entire program his full support in any program that we organize is truly inspiring i also thank dr celia chalam for taking the initiative and for coordinating the organization of this lecture with dr selva kumar I sincerely thank all my colleagues, students, colleagues from the regional stations who have joined us on Zoom, as well as those of us who are attending the lecture on YouTube for their participation and interaction. A special thanks to Dr. Sunil Archak and Mr. Vijay Mandal for their logistic support. In the end, I wish to thank one and all who have contributed towards this program in any way. Thank you, everyone. and with this we come to an end of this program dr silva kumar we would have loved to offer you a cup of tea after this but with this platform i'm sorry for that but okay. let us all unmute ourselves yes, and give him a big hand thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am you thank you for the pleasure to share my experience i'm happy to see happy my, to see uh, my uh, colleague dr huda uh, sir and my uh, and my, uh, my classmate dr sarvanath thank you thank you thank you thank you dr sarvanath thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you